High Commissioner's Office, London, September 23rd, 1915. Personal. Dear Mr. Fisher, I shall talk as if you were by my side, as in the good days. I write of the unfortunate Dardanelles expedition, in the light of what knowledge I could gain on the spot, on the lines of communication, and in Egypt. It is undoubtedly one of the most terrible chapters in our history. Your fears have been justified. I visited most parts of Anzac and Suvla Bay positions, walked many miles through the trenches, conversed with the leaders and what senior and junior officers I could reach, and was favoured in all parts with full and frank confidence. Our men were, I found, immensely proud of their little progress on the plateau on our right, Lone Pine Plateau. But I found that we had paid 2,000 500 men for this advance on a short front of 300 yards. Winter is on us and it brings grave dangers. Perhaps the most vital danger from weather is that before the rains come to end all our water troubles, there will be a spell of bad weather at sea that will prevent us from getting water ashore. Already the flies are spreading dysentery to an alarming extent and the sick rate would astonish you. It cannot be less than 600 a day. We must be evacuating fully 1,000 sick and wounded men every day. When the autumn rains come and unbury our dead, sickness must increase. Even now, the stench in many of our trenches is sickening. Alas, the good human stuff that lies there buried. The brave hearts still. The sorrow in our hard-hit Australian households. The spirit of Suvla is simply deplorable. The men have no confidence in the staff, and to tell the truth, they have little confidence in London. Every man knows that the last operations were grossly bungled by the general staff, and that Hamilton has led a series of armies into a series of cul-de-sacs. Men living in trenches with no movement except when they are digging, and with nothing to look at except a narrow strip of sky in the blank walls of their prisons, cannot remain cheerful or even thoughtful. Much more I could tell you, but my task is done, though I shall write again next mail, I hope with better news. This of course is a private letter, but you will show it to George Pierce and Hughes, so I shall say nothing more than the plain goodbye of a friend. Sincerely yours. <laughs>